basically, first of all, uh, sustainability as it's being put out uh, currently, it's it's not really uh, just uh, sort of saving energy or using materials, local materials. Uh, the first thing about sustainability is is to do uh, buildings that are properly used, uh, buildings that don't have wasted space, uh, buildings that are not idle and empty. You know, you can have the uh, the best uh, passive house designed uh, building and empty. It's it's totally unsustainable. As a client, there has been so many times where we've asked, you know, um, you know, we're doing introductory meetings or we're trying to kick off with a consultant that we've already appointed, and the moment we bring up the topic of sustainability, it somehow somehow suddenly becomes an extra. Right. Oh, this is an extra scope. Oh, we need to bring a specialist in. Um, and some for something that was so inherent in what architecture always has been. We also need to support our customers to actually start using and implementing because there is a cost element. It's still the elephant in the room, as you mentioned, when you talk about sustainability. It's, oh my God, it's going to add to the scope of work or it's going to add to the cost of a project. So what we've done is we've um, we've issued special licenses. We've issued incentive programs for um, companies that actually want to implement sustainable or green or uh, efficiencies or programs into whether they're um, architectural firms or whether they're supply Suppliers. And quite often we're thinking to complicate it as a kind of industry. Um, I met a hotel operator operating lots and lots of hotels, and they, they complained about the cooling load bills of the hotels in the Middle East. And uh, we're just, for example, implementing switches for the balcony sliding doors. When the balcony sliding doors opened, a switch switches off the AC. And this was bringing down the cooling loads massively. A very simple switch for $2, yeah, a couple of wires with the AC. And um, it was a massive gain and reduction of the cooling loads. Okay, there's a lot of um, opportunities out there to start in, on a smaller scale to encourage people to take this. I mean, you can do lots of retrofitting nowadays. And I, I think that's what's happening in this marketplace that is unique, where a lot of the traditional homes, a lot of the villas that you see around town that are being converted into, you know, whether it's retail or whether it's other shops or restaurants, are putting in a, bit, a little bit of all of the uh, upgraded efficiency, lighting, you know, wa uh, wastewater uh, purification, whatever they want to do. But but there are opportunities where you can do a lot of retrofits, and that's something that I, I, I've seen done a lot. Um, rather than just focus on something that's brand new, where it is time consuming, budget consuming. As human beings, we have to start caring, regardless of whether you know we're architects or developers or clients or or what background we come from or what sector. Um, and it's just our responsibility to make sure these things are inherently put into uh, the practice of architecture. We, in, we call it the kind of sustainable design, the so-called human-centric design, because we need to get both things under one, under one hat, I would say, both sustainability, but also focusing on the human being. Because I think we all would agree the most efficient building in the Middle East would be a, just a box building with no windows and two meter of polystyrene insulation. Um, but we would f miss the target of building this for the human being. So it's a kind of this mixture in between, yeah?